the Sankhya Darshana, it means it is only saying what is Sankhya Darshana. These Karikas are not taking any opposite side of this. It means any opponent and other opinions like we have in another uh, uh, Vedanta and another textbooks we have uh, Purpaksha and Siddhanta, the opponent's arguments, then the uh, Siddhanta says, so, so that, that's, that is not there in this. So only they are just mentioning the what is uh, all about Sankhya. So Trividham Pramana Vishta, it means we consider only the uh, tree and if, uh, uh, if uh, other philosophies they consider more, we don't mind. That's what Trividham Pramana Vishta Asmami. So we consider only three. And why we need these pramanas? The reason for this pramana, without pramana, nothing can be proved. So pramana, prameya siddhi, pramana adhi. Verily speaking, if you want to prove something, some prameya, prameya means which is to be proved, or to be proven. So the objects of proof. So with the uh, pramana, what you want to establish. So we have uh, 25 tattvas. That is uh, uh, prakriti and purusha and the mod uh, manifestation and modification of prakriti. So 25 tattvas are called prameyas. The object of pramanas. That to be proved. Those are 25. So that these 25 prameyas to be proved by pramanas only. So there is no other uh, no, uh, support of belief or anything like that. It is proved by pramanas. So by categoriz uh, category, uh, categorizing the uh, objects, uh, taking one by one, and examining one, one, one by one, how can we prove, how can we can understand that, and what is the use of that. Everything will be uh, stated in a uh, logical and uh, you know, a proved way. So that is why it is called Pramana Di Pramaya Siddhi. Because belief. Uh, with the belief and uh, other uh, support, uh, we believe in the objects like uh, heaven and all other. So the, here they are not talking about the heaven and because that is all based on belief. There is no proof for that. What Shastra says, we believe in that. With the Shraddha. So we have uh, Shraddha on that. So we believe in it. Here, Prameyas are considered as uh, the object of philosophies. In philosophy, in Darshan Shastras, they take each object and examine it and give whatever possible proof to prove it as truth, as reality. So therefore, this sentence is very famous, Prameyas Siddhi. Pramana Adhi. So you cannot just imagine an object and uh, then say this is what is uh, the reality. The reality cannot be imagined. Reality should be proved by experience and by this means of valid uh, knowledge. So this is what uh, the Pramana means. So we have a small chart here. Pramanas proof. We have three types. Pratyaksham. So pratyaksham is called perception. Anumanam inference. Apta vachanam. Testimony. Yesterday we discussed about apta. So the testimony is apta. So now 
we know what are the objects of this philosophy tattvas principal and now after that we know the means of uh, that uh, objects to understand those objects we have these three kinds of means pramanas proof now after after this the first one pratyaksha now the fifth kariga is going to uh, give a definition for pratyaksha what is pratyaksha and what is anumana and what is aptavachan those will be defined so we take fifth kariga pradivishaya adhyavasayo ಿಂಗಿ ಪೂರ್ವಕ ಆಪ್ತಶ್ರುತಿರಾಪ್ತವಚನ ಪ್ರತಿಷಯ ಅಧ್ಯವಸಾಯೋ ದೃಷ್ಟ ದೃಷ್ಟ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಪ್ರಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸೆಪ್ಟೈಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಪ್ರತಿ ವಿಷಯ ಈಚ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ ಆಸ್ ಆನ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರತಿ ವಿಷಯ uh ear has an object a sound and i has an object as rupam the color so there it prati vishayam adhyavasaya it is ascertain it is always decided which object and which uh, sense organ will receive it so this is called prati vishaya adhyavasayo and this this is uh, considered as the uh, experience of the we what we experience perceive what we perceive from outside objects that is our uh, certain what is uh, what we perceive is right so prati vishaya adhyavasaya adhyavasaya means is a uh, ascertainment it is always certain what we perceive is correct so prati vishaya adhyavasayo drishtam drishtam means perception this is pratyaksha so pratyaksha and drishtam both means the same so whatever we experience in our life from the beginning is all considered as pratyaksha is a normal pramana there's a Uh, any any anybody who uh, see the outside objects will receive something some perception will be there so it can be uh, human beings or other beings they also have some perception so similarly we have the perception and we think about that this is called pratyavishaya adhyavasaya drishta although uh, people normally know what this pratyaksha is even then philosophers they will say about their own perception their own definition so we they have to give their definition then only the philosophy is considered as philosophy if you don't give definitions then uh, it is not a philosophy so the philosophical way of uh, defining all the objects therefore uh we have this prati vishaya adhyavasaya drishtam this is pratyaksham now trividham anumanam akhyatam to anumana inference 
is declared to be threefold, three kinds. That we will discuss in next uh, uh, karika. So trividham anumana makhyatam. So three kinds of inference. It is very famous in Nyaya Sutra and other. So tat purvakam trividham anumanam purvavat sheshavat samanya do drishtamcha. So three kinds of anumana. It will come in next term. Uh, Trividham Anumanam Akhyadam Akhyadam is declared uh, It is stated in the Shastras And how it works It is Linga Lingi Purvakam Linga Lingi Purvakam Tad, tad Lingam Tad means that Anumana Inference Preceded by a mark and that mark, mark means indication. The linga is mark or indication and the indication uh, takes you to which it indicates. So this is lingi, the which is indicated. So linga is indication or mark and lingi is what is indicated so there is a relation like when we see smoke smoke is an indication and it leads to fire the so fire which is indicated so which is marked so there is some connection so this connection when this connection is known then you can do inference so tal linga lingi purvakam is always this connection would be there without this uh, uh, inference is not possible so they are just directly saying so which is translated as preceded by the mark and by that of which it is the mark the possessor of the mark that is called lingi so linga lingi purvakam even our uh, Shiva Linga is said as Linga. So, because Shiva Linga indicates the God itself, it is an indication. So, it is a lakshana. So, we cannot uh, uh, do uh, worship to the all pervading Brahman without form. So, we need some form. The formless Brahman cannot be worshipped. So the indication for that Brahman, the Shiva Linga came. It is there in Shiva Purana. So Shiva, the, the formless Lord, appeared in the form as Shiva Linga. So Shiva Linga has no, no it is like just a, a, a shape, uh, oval shape. But whatever you see in that is a it is an indication of the uh, all pervading Brahman. So similarly, that is also Linga, and in uh, Nyaya Shastra, the Linga means uh, Hetu, reason, the indication, like Mar, it can be anything like that. Sometimes, effect is an indicator of cause, the cause and effect relation. So, like the smoke is an effect of fire. In one way, you can see that smoke is an effect of fire. So, if uh, smoke is there, fire is indicated. It means fire is there. Fire, fire uh, should be there. So, like that, this connection is there. It's called linga lingi purvakam. And apta shruti hi apta vajanam tu. Apta shruti, the trustworthy person or the Vedas. It's called Apta Shruti. Apta means who has, who achieved or who realized. The realized person is called Apta. Apta Prapta. So he achieved it. So he know, he knows what it is. So then he says about. It. So what he experienced, he speaks about. 
and he, uh, what he has not known, he will not speak about. Then the person is called apta. So prapta is apta. So pra apta shrudi. So the shrudi Veda in Vedas we have so many rishis. The Veda is a uh, no, no, their experience. Whatever came to their mind after their experience is called Veda Shruti. So they uh, revealed the Veda through their mind. Their, their relaxation with the uh, Vedas. That is called Shruti. So, Apta Shruti hi Apta Vachanam. Trustworthy person, statement of trustworthy person. That is we call Guru. So, Apta Vachanam, Guru Vachanam. So this is Apta Pramana. Now what Kavila Maharshi says is Apta Pramana. What Ishwara Krishna says Apta Pramana. We have to follow whatever they said. They, say, they, they are trustworthy for us. So we have, we should follow that. This is called Apta Vachanam. So three kinds of Pramana is defined here. So this is what, this is why we should uh, memorize all these shlokas. At least uh, these the three, four, this, no, this is all definitions. There is not, no story, nothing like that. See, if you remember this, it is useful for uh, studying all of the test books. Try to memorize. It is good, uh, good exercise for brain if you try to memorize. Mm. Previously we were doing like that. This. Is not uh, we were each sloka memorized and then no? last time I think we memorized no can you correct uh, last time we did that so tal linga lingi purvakam apta shruti apta vajanam do so this is uh, the fifth karika uh, def definition of three pramanas now you see they are uh, moving systematically one after another so if you remember the first one then it will be connected one after another because brain needs some uh, connection with the other thing so the first uh, uh, dukkham then the reason for dukkham and then uh, how we can get rid of uh, this uh, suffering and then came all these uh, 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 principles uh, 25 principles tattvas and to know them so there were pramana we need pramanas now pramanas are uh, defined. Now, uh, in relation with this pramana, something more to be known. So the sixth karika comes. Samanya dastu drishta adindriyanam prati diranumanat. Siddham Paroksham Aptam Agamat Siddham So, Trividham Anuvanam Akhyadam, it has been stated in fifth sloka. So, what is this Trividham Anuvanam? So, that statement is again uh, established. So, Samanya Dastu Drishtar Adindriyanam Pratiti Ranumana Tasmada Picha Siddham Parokshamaptam Agamat so, Samanya Dastu Drishta. Samanya means generally what we see. Samanya Dastu Drishta. Specifically not known, but generally known. The Samanya Dastu Drishta. This is called Linga. This is an indication. So, you see something directly. Samanya Dastu Drishta. 
uh, what you saw, what you experienced directly from that Adindriyanam Pratitihi Anmana. From that you, see, uh, you will try to infer what is not received or perceived. So, Adindriya. So, beyond our perception. Indriya, what we can see, perceive. And beyond our perception, we do infer. So, that is Anumana Adindriyanam Pratitihi. Now, Prakriti and Purusha is not generally known. <coughs> Purusha and Prakriti are Atindriyas, beyond our sense organs. So, beyond our sense organs reception, which is beyond. So, therefore, Atindriya, Indriya Atita, the transcending our sense organs. Now, how can we not, if we cannot not, then there is no use of studying this. So we have to find some uh, way, some means to know those objects, which are Adindriyas, beyond our reach. So therefore, uh, for Prakriti, Purusha and Mahatattva and all other objects, we take the support of inference and man. Without that it is not possible. So, Adindriyanam Pratitihi Anmanat Bhavati. Okay. So, now, okay, this, this is possible when we have some general understanding. If we have some, uh, some understanding of some object, then through that we can go. Like uh, from smoke, we can go to the fire which is not seen beyond our perception. That can be perceived or that can be uh, 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 thought about through the smoke. If there is no smoke, no fire can be known. So then, when we take uh, the objects like Prakriti, because Prakriti is said, uh, said to be Alinka, without an indication. Prakriti has no Linga. We will discuss later. Eh? Prakriti is Alinka. Alinka means without indication, no trace. The Prakriti cannot be traced. Similarly, Purusha is also Alinka. Purusha, Purusha cannot be traced. Huh? Mula Prakriti cannot be traced or the... Yes, yeah, Prakriti in the sense Mula Prakriti only. Uh, so Mula Prakriti cannot be traced, it is called Alinka. Similarly, Purusha cannot be traced because Purusha has no quali qualities. So without quality, how can you see or perceive? A sense organs cannot reach. If sense organ cannot reach, mind cannot reach. Because mind is based on sense organs perception. Therefore, this Purusha and Prakriti cannot be known because the cannot be known. So we have no trace of that. So how can we know that? This question comes. Then it says, without trace, we cannot do Anumana. Then comes Akta Vajanam. Then comes scriptures, scriptural pramanas. So, Pratyaksha is not possible, Anumana is not possible because Anumana is possible only by trace. And when there is no trace, Anumana is not possible. So, Pratyaksha is not possible because it cannot be object objectified. So, these two are gone. Then comes Agama. So, Agama needs no trace and no perception, nothing. So whatever Agama says, we take into consideration and we believe in that, then we uh, uh, experience that. So this is the difference between Anumana and Agama. Anumana has some uh, generic uh, uh, support, 
some generic uh, uh, perception or some trace. But Agama has no. Agama, Agama, you have to completely believe in that and then do sadhana on research on that what you uh, heard or what you uh, uh, studied from uh, scriptures. Then after some time, in due course of time, you will experience what you heard. This is what the speciality of Agama. Therefore it says, Tasmada Vicha Siddha. Tasmada Vimane, even from that inference. Even from that inference. Tasmada Vicha Asiddham. What is not established. Asiddha means not established. So what is not established, even from the inference, is established by Agama. So Parokcham Apta Agama Siddham. Parokcha means beyond sensation. That is called parokcha. That the sense organs cannot reach. So beyond that reach of sense organs. That is parokcha. So it, uh, whatever is there in the scriptures are parokcha. So therefore we need the support of scriptures also. Pratyaksha cannot work. Inference, Anumana cannot work, then the third comes as Agama. So, Tasmada Vicha Asiddham Parokcham Aptam Agama Siddham. So, Parokcha Apta Agama. Apta Agama Siddham. From the testimony and uh, revelation, we, uh, uh, we are proof those objects and then we follow that. So, therefore, here we need Shraddha, belief. So we come to some completely dedicate or intellectual thoughts to scriptural knowledge or Guru Vachanams to understand that. So we believe in that. First we take as Whatever the scripture, uh, scriptures say or Guru say as truth, then we contemplate on that. So in due course of time, you will experience that. Therefore, in this state, we need to believe. There is no other way. So Shraddha and Vishwasa, all this is needed. Otherwise, it is not possible. It is not only in this... Uh, or uh, philosophical uh, knowledge, but also in other science and all other knowledge, we have to believe in certain stage. Then only we can do some research on that. Whatever the previous scientists said, the formulas or whatever they prove, we believe in that, then we do research on that. Then uh, the uh, result will come accordingly. Similarly, here also, uh, whatever scripture said, first we believe and then practice, then we will get the right result. We go uh, accordingly, we go by the scriptures. So here you cannot ask questions. So in this stage it is called Rishidhara. There is a, there is a system in Vedas. Rishidhara and Munidhara. So two different uh, paths to understand, two different uh, uh, way, ways to understand the test, what is said there. So Rishidhara, it means whatever Rishi said, we take as granted and we believe in that. Just follow whatever the Rishi said. There is no chance of questioning. There is no point of questioning. It is called the Rishi Dhara. Uh, for example, if uh, Rishi says, if you do good karmas, you will get good result. So now we have not done good karmas and we have not seen the good result. They are completely ignorant. Now the Guru says, you do this, you will get that. So what we do? We believe in that, 
and then we just follow and continue to do it. So then the result will come as he said. It, it may take a little time, sometimes less time, sometimes more time according to the practitioner. Okay. So this way, whatever in Veda said for our own benefits, whatever there, so we follow that. It's called a Rishi Dhara. There is no question. And the second one is Muni Dhara. Muni Dhara, it is like, you know, uh, they uh, give some statements and uh, to prove that they themselves give some examples, some, some uh, you know, reasons to prove that. And there will be uh, question, answer, discussion, debates, all are there. So it is uh, uh, accepted. So in Munidhara, you can do all kinds of discussion debates. It is accepted that you can do in Munidhara. You see, most of the Upanishads are Munidhara. Because when they say about uh, uh, Atma, you don't just believe Atma is there or Brahman is there. There is no point of believing it. You are just following it. So, after once, uh, first they state what is Atma, then they try to prove it. Atma Satchidananda, because of this reason. Atma created or Brahman created all this world, this creation, and how he created. All this they discuss. And their questions comes, then they answer. Even in Upanishads we can see that. So, this is called Munidhara. Only in Munidhara you can have debates and discussion and questions. And Rishidhara cannot be. All Karmakandas and Upasanas are based on Rishidharas. And this Vedanta is based on, especially about Brahman and uh, all others, based on Munidhara. Therefore, Munis are discussing there, Mananam is there. So, uh, there is no. Uh, there is, why, I uh, know, if, uh, if we want to know the truth, the reality, it should be tested. Without test, how can you prove it? So there is a test and then prove it. That is uh, the uh, Munidhara. And Rishidhara, Munidhara, and these all philosophical schools, these are under Munidharas. Munidhara. It means you can uh, question it. If you don't uh, understand, you can uh, um, uh, uh, object it. So whatever way you can do that. You, you, you can uh, bring your own ideas into this. There is no problem. If you want to bring some new ideas into this, it is possible. Because in Munidhara it is uh, accepted. So therefore, there is uh, always a development in uh, philosophy, philosophical schools, Darshan Shastras. But in Veda, there is no development. Veda is what it is said in Rishidhara, it is always like that, the same. You cannot change. If you want to change some mantras, it's not possible. You want to change the chanting of the mantra, swaras of the mantra, not possible. You cannot change even a, even a small letter. Whatever is there, it should be. You should follow because it is it comes comes under Rishidhara. It is Rishis. And Munidhara is the all the philosophies like Vedanta. If you see all textbooks of Vedanta, Brahma, Upanishads, it developed a lot after Bhashya and uh, commentaries and uh, sub commentaries and uh, so much so much of development. Prakarana Granthas. No, all this come. So why? Because it has always a chance of developing. It comes under Munidhara. So therefore, this Aptavachanam here what he mentions is mainly on Vedas, whatever said in the Vedas and secondly on this Darshan Shastras. Now we don't know what is Prakriti is. We are just uh, beginners. We are thinking about, we are trying to understand what is Prakriti is. 
so now what we could, we could do we can only believe what kabila said or what rishi uh, kabila muni said so we just take this after vakyam and then contemplate on that so first we believe what it is there and then this is called aptagamat siddham this way uh, very systematically it is proved the first uh, realm of uh, perception is uh, pratyaksha five sense organs and second realm uh, mental it is anumana inference so you need some support of uh, pratyaksha and third level it is uh, based on agamas scriptural uh, text uh, books and all the statements so you have to study scriptures correctly for that you need to study sanskrit because the text books are in sanskrit and you need all the support of darshana shastras so this is how we uh, achieve knowledge through this means <coughs> here um, actually the samanyato drishta adindriyana pradidir anumana here we can see like uh, uh, three kinds of anumana just now i mentioned it uh, first one is called purvavat purvavat purva it means it means with cause when we see clouds in the sky we can infer after some time the rain will come so the forthcoming rain is inferred by the clouds which we see now directly at present so by present experience we can infer or ascertain the future experience this is called purvavat purva means before now the cloud is before rain the rain is going to be so rain, rain is a after effect or as a, as a product of cloud so this is called purvavat anumana this is from nyaya sutra if you I refer to nyaya sutra 115 so it is there the purvavat anumana so all type of anumana we don't study this uh, type of anumana in tarka sangraha and all those tarka sangraha is more much developed is all type of anumana the purvavat and then comes sheshavat the second anumana is called sheshavat sheshavat means we want to know uh, what is the taste of the water in the ocean so that we know the uh, the water in the ocean is salty now how can we know the all ocean is salty can we taste all ocean no you cannot see so you taste one part you take little bit of water and taste it and you feel salty you experience that is salty then you infer the all water of ocean is salty this is called sheshavat so one part is known through that you ascertain you clearly know the other parts are also the same it's called sheshavat anumana the so, purvavat for example a cloud and rain and sheshavat the water uh, sea water one drop of sea water and the other sea water is known as the same so it it, it will be correct there is no uh, doubt in that then comes here that what mentioned samanyado drishtam 
सामान्य तो दृष्टम अनिंद्रियाँ नम से सामान्य तो दृष्टम सो नाउ आ वी सी वन मैंगो ट्री इस फ्लावर जब वन सीजन कम्स मैंगो ट्री इस फ्लावर वी सी द सीइंग वन मैंगो ट्री वी कैन से that wherever in this area mango trees are there all have flowers so samanya do drishta samanya do so one uh, this is because the season will uh, season is the reason that the all uh, mango trees will be flower in this season in particular season so we know that so this is uh, called samanya do drishta and from this we can uh, we can connect to the cause and effect theory also the cause and effect also is like that if effect has some particular character then we can say cause also has the same character because the characteristics of effect comes from the cause so the cause and effect relation also known through this so this is uh, called three uh, three types of anuman inference it's so all kind of uh, 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 no inference they have this division and after that there were there are so many developments in this uh, uh, inference and nyaya uh, shastra of gautama and kanadas vaisheshika darshana they are all based on this uh, inference they Uh, give much uh, importance to inference. So now the seventh sloka. Now he is uh, going to introduce prakriti, purusha, and all other tattvas. Now one one by we will uh, discuss starting from prakriti. What is prakriti, and what is the difference between prakriti and purusha, and all this will start. From the 25 tattvas from the beginning. Uh, before uh, uh, starting taking Prakriti's uh, definition and all the, he says, why we are unable to know Prakriti, Purusha, and all these subtle elements. If subtle elements are there, why we are not? Uh, why we could not see? So what is the reason? So he is giving many reason for why we are not seeing the subtle causes and effect and whatever unseen. So there are so many reasons. The causes of failure of external perception enumerated. So why we fail to know, to understand that is enumerated in seventh karaka. So we will chant this karika. Adi dura sa vipya dindriya khadan mano navastha natcha. अति सामिप्या 
so this adi should be uh, suffixed to all this indriya indriya ghada manovastana eh? all this so adi qualifies the distance as well as all the rest it says it should be connected to adi so adi dura adi samikya uh, it cannot be seen like if uh, the 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 stars in the sky they are there but it cannot be seen because they are so too, too far some are seen which are nearer we see if it too far we cannot see similarly uh, we cannot uh, see our this you no know, eye balls or the, the hair in the eyes we cannot see because it is too near to the eyes similarly whatever there inside like the even our own self we cannot see because we are that this too adi samipya adi samipya so adi samipya adi dura the object cannot be perceived okay indriya ghada if our sense organs has any problem if they are defective then you cannot see the object so if uh, i have some problem i cannot see and ear has some uh, disease or something it cannot hear so indriya ghata so first we have to understand uh, if our sense organs are okay or not so whether they are uh, working uh, clearly uh, correctly or we have to understand that otherwise we will think okay it is not known this is not but it cannot be seen there are objects in front of us our eyesight cannot see because our eyesight has some limitation some object can be seen and some cannot be seen like that uh, indriya ghada it can be developed if you develop indriyas uh, you can see uh, much more like uh, we have uh, many siddhis in yoga shastra if you develop indriyas you can see special siddhis so indriya ghada mano anavasthana cha if mind is not present mind is not active then also we don't see object and we don't perceive when we are listening to lectures if mind is not there the words cannot be perceived and we are part, uh, we don't know what happened so sometimes it happen we we have this experience if uh, something happen it just in front of us but mind is not there we don't see so mano anavasthana cha the absence of mind or non presence of mind because this translation we try to translate what is there in the sanskrit so exactly we translate it therefore anavasthana it is written non presence actually absence of mind if when we say in english it should be absence of mind but the word given here is anavastha so avasthana is presence and anavasthana is non presence therefore you uh, find some difficulty in translation but uh, we uh, did uh, knowing it like that because we need a correct translation of the sanskrit then once you understand the translation you can uh, elaborate it in uh, normal english otherwise no uh, we, we don't know how it came if you say absence of mind this word is not there in the sanskrit the absence of mind is not there it has anavasthana so non presence of the mind so then we don't see the object and uh, saukshmya if something is very subtle very fine very narrow we cannot be seen like particles cannot be seen atoms cannot be seen because they are there but it cannot be seen 
So this is called Saumya, uh, Saushmya, the Sushma Bhava. And then Vyavadhana, intervention. If something is there in between, we cannot see. Now we are sitting here, we can't see outside what, it, what outside is. So this is an, this is an obstruction. This, uh, this is what is uh, within intervention cannot be seen. Vyavadhana. Vyavadhana. Abhibhavad samana vihara. They have done a good research on this. You, you see how they calculated all this and uh, enumerated all these points. And Saushmya very subtly cannot be seen. And then Vyavadhana intervention. But what, uh, what is there we cannot see. And Abhibhava overpowered by something else cannot be seen. Like for the same example, if we take the daytime, we cannot see the stars. Although stars are there, but their light, the uh, stars' lights are overpowered by sunlight. Therefore, even though the stars are there, the presence of stars are there, uh, is there, but we don't see it because this daylight is overpowered. When the daylight dims after sunset, we see the stars. This is suppression by others. That is called Abhibhada, Abhibhava, overpowered. The word meaning is overpowered. Abhibhava, suppression by others. Ab, then comes Samana Vihara, similar, similarity. No, intermixture with the lights. This is a translation. Uh, so samana means everything is the same. You cannot uh, uh, distinguish what the first one, second one, third one. You cannot distinguish. For example, if you keep one uh, vessel and put some drops of water, one, two, three, four. So after that, if you want uh, see which is first drop, second drop, we cannot because it become intermixed and combined. Although the drops are there, you can, if you want, you can change. And similarly, with atoms, the similar atoms cannot be seen. And uh, like you no, know, if you uh, uh, take uh, uh, one handful of uh, rice, rice uh, grains of rice, and then you count it one, two, three, four, five, six, and put it in one place, and then try to again see which was one, which was two, which was three. It's not possible. Why? Because it is the same character. The samana bhiharat. This the similarity is what uh, um, is uh, the same. So you cannot, uh, in the, the, the mixture cannot be uh, distinguished. So this is what happens uh, when we think about objects. Our thought process one after another it comes. But very difficult to under, uh, distinguish the first thought, second thought, third thought, fourth thought. Now we are thinking about one object. Like we are thinking about this book. For half an hour, one hour, we are thinking about only the book. But it is not one thought. Each minute second, the thought changes. So there are a bundle of thoughts. But we cannot distinguish one, two, three, four like that. So this is all intermixture. In Yoga Sutra, there is a uh, there is a meditation. If you do that, you can distinguish all these similar things. You can uh, separate it. That is what they say. Uh, you can, so the first thought, second thought, third thought, everything you can be done. And if yogi can, if you uh, keep uh, a uh, bowl of uh, rice in front of yogi, and he can distinguish all this one after another. It says in that. Then it's possible also. Because he has so much of concentration 
and clear perception. And each point is clearly registered in his mind. Because what happened to our uh, thought process is, when we see something, we register only a little bit, not completely. When we see this, maybe for years we are seeing this. But we don't know how, what design it is. If somebody asks what design it is, no. We can say only how it is, it has some design. But what design it is, they have not perceived it. This is a, it's a, it's actually a disease. Yeah, really speaking, it is, uh, it is a problem of our mind that it doesn't uh, receive the object completely. Receive only half of it or, or superficially it is received. So therefore, it is like that. So there, uh, if we do a meditation on this, if we are aware about that, now just I gave this example, nobody uh, thought about it. So it is, what is said it is, no, no, we are seeing some design, that's all. The flower will maybe flower or something like that. So this, uh, this, uh, no, uncertainty, that what we uh, perceive also, we don't have any, any certain, uh, but the thought is not clear. So clarity, so without clarity, you cannot go beyond. So first, the thought process should be clear and concentrated. An object should be perceived completely, whatever way it is possible, then it is registered here. For that mind needs uh, tremendous energy to receive uh, clear, therefore you need to practice meditation, concentration and pranayama and give the mind full energy, then that will try to understand. Like we are studying Vedanta in the morning and the evening we are studying Sankhya. So there is a chance of confusion. So the Vedanta will come here and the uh, Sankhya will come there and so It will happen like that. But if mind is clear, the thought process is clear. So what suggestion you give, it will take only. When you study Sankhya, only Sankhya philosophy will come and you will only remember Sankhya philosophy. So Vedanta will not come and mix with this. So this clarity of thought is uh, uh, necessary for a sadhana, uh, sadhaka. So that is samana bhivara. Because of this also, uh, we are unable to perceive objects clearly. Okay, we stop here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudaschade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti